Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Unthug Game Channel. I'm AJ Gels. Guys, it's time once more for the weekly show. I know this is a little late, but I did put up a video earlier uh, today talking about uh, the um, update video that Telltale did. Uh, <laughs> I started the 12-minute video, uh, made my comments here and there, realized, oh, shit, we've gone for about a half an hour. We had all this crap, to, uh, crap meaning stuff. What? You, you know what the fuck I mean. <laughs> But I saw that video, I uh, went for about a half hour, and then realized, oh, geez, we got a lot more to talk about. And then I just decided, you know what? I'm going to make that its own video, put it up in the morning. I'm going to do this tonight after I, you know, I had, you know, had some lunch, had a nap. I like naps. They're great. Um, <laughs> so a lot of this is actually coming out of, uh, out of Comic-Con right now. Uh, you know, if, if anybody doesn't know this about me, um... I'm not a big comic book fan. I mean, I, I, I know the character. I know some characters in this. I know mo mostly mainstream. I, I know probably what m what most people know. Um, and most mainstream stuff. I might know a little bit more than the average person. You know what I mean? I, 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 I my, co my comic knowledge isn't extremely deep. So really, Comic-Con doesn't really mean much to me. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of superhero movies. I used to be, and not so much anymore, because I don't think they're that good. But, uh, so really, Comic-Con, the only thing left at Comic-Con is just a little bit of gaming news, uh, that we get here and there, uh, and, uh, part of that, actually, I guess, is a, a new Shadow of War trailer that we're going to, uh, gonna watch right now. Uh, the article, I'm, I'm gonna read just because it, 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 it adds something, um, to another game that I, that I, or, yeah, yeah, I'll talk about it when we get there. Come, Talia. See through my eyes. She is not our ally. My gaze is fixed upon the fate of Middle Earth. Look, Minas Ethel. The spider showed us the truth. Gondor's last fortress in Mordor cannot fall. Minas Ethel will go the way of all flesh. How much of your soul was lost in that ring? There is truth in your vision. Call me another. Be careful what you ask for. With prophecy comes torment. Saves us all. Return what you have stolen from me. And I will bring Sauron to you. Why would I do that, Ringmaker? You and Sauron are one. But what? What was what was that what was that last little part there? What the hell? I'm I'm sorry, I Again, you want you want something else that I that I actually I don't know all of the lore behind it's it, it is Lord of the Rings, um, although I don't remember Calabrimbor's face or the the wraith I don't remember his face being that's that wrinkled and fucked up looking. Um, again, it, it, like I said, I, I I don't know my Lord of the Rings lore that well. I mean, I, I it mostly has been forever since I've seen the movies, read the books, anything like that. So Shelob, I or Shelob, I I'm gonna say Shelob because that sounds more, I don't know, Middle Earthy. <laughs> but I so so I don't really know the character uh, that well, or you know where she kind of fits into the mythos. But um, yeah, I'm 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 not really sure. That trailer was cool though. Damn, like I like I wasn't expecting there to be kind of like this prophecy thing, and that like that line right there at that end is gonna haunt me until this game launches. That whole um, you and <laughs> you and Sauron are one and the same. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to, uh, be playing the first, um, you know, Middle Earth game on, uh, on the channel before, uh, October 10th when Shadow of War launches. I, 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 I can't wait. The game, the game's looking awesome. Uh, this article's by, uh, Chris Pereira, by the way, of GameSpot, so it's, uh, it's, 
keep reading here. Uh, the article reads, uh, as part of its San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con panel today, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has released a new trailer for Middle-Earth Shadow of War. Uh, the focus on, is on uh, Shelob, the giant evil spider that fans know well, but she's got a much different look than you're likely expecting. While we do briefly see a giant spider toward the end of the trailer, Shelob spends most of the trailer... In, hum in a human form, Talion interacts with her and is provided with visions of the future, which sparks a conflict between Talion and Calabrimbor, uh, who believes she is not to be trusted. Shelob uh, is voiced by Pollyanna McIntosh, hopefully that's pr uh, pronounced correctly, who uh, played Jadis on uh, The Walking Dead and starred in the 2011 horror movie The Woman. Uh, she was confirmed as part of the voice cast recently alongside with comedian and actor Kamal Nanjiani, who voiced a character in this year's Mass Effect Andromeda. In Shadow of War, he'll be playing an orc who may fill a role similar to that of Ratbag in the previous game. Alright, th this is what I wanted to talk about. It, this is the main reason why I read this article. Uh, out just because I, I, I've been looking for this. Because I'm in... Uh, Director Tan, uh, the... Solarian... Uh, head of the Nexus in um, in Mass Effect Andromeda. I've been sitting here the entire time. I, I, I think even during the Let's Play I've mentioned this. I'm like, this sounds like Kamel Nanjiani. Is this Kamel Nanjiani? Could not find that anywhere. And there we go. I think I have my, my confirmation that it was Kamel Nanjiani. Um, and also, I, I, I think he'd also do a really good, um, kind of whatever this game's version of Rat Bag is, the little kind of backstabbing orc leader i don't know i i i think that, that that's a very good fit uh come on if, you, if you've not listened to come on on gianni's uh stand up i'd suggest it it's pretty it, it's it's not it's not bad he's not my favorite comedian but uh pretty good um ba back into the back to the article uh also in the trailer we get a glimpse of the nazgul including the witch king as well as palantir um uh, uh, there's also an ominous line about the connection between Celebrimbor and Sauron. Uh, Shadow War was originally slated to launch in August, eh, only for it to be pushed back. Uh, it is now scheduled for release on October 10th. Those who have played the Shadow, uh, who have played the Shadow of Mordor, will be able to import data from the game, including their top nemesis. When we tried the game out at E3, we found it to be much more challenging than Shadow of Mordor. Actually, I like that the the top nemesis. Ooh, even more reason to. Uh, play Middle Earth again. Plus, I'm like two trophies shy of the Platinum, and I want that damn Platinum. Um, as always, though, guys, uh, remember, there's a, a list of topics that I covered down the dis down the description. Uh, links to all the articles, and they are also timestamped, so you can skip around and watch and read whatever article you would like. Um, moving on. Uh, next topic is actually a game that, look, in all honesty, I could not care less about this game at all i know so many people are excited i know a lot of people who are excited about it hence why i'm covering this but i am not a kingdom hearts fan i played the first one i've played the second one and i and i like the games i've just not bought into the franchise um i also i need to go back and play them if i even want to play um kingdom hearts 3 but in all honesty i i've not found the love of kingdom hearts that a lot of people have and i i understand this connection it's you know it's disney and uh, also, for some reason, Final Fantasy. <laughs> so I get, so I get the love of Kingdom Hearts. It's just it, I've never kind of bought into that. Uh, by the way, here we go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kingdom Hearts Three Director not considering Switch version until after Xbox One, PS4 versions are released. Article by. Uh, uh, words. Andrew Goldfarb and Terry Schwartz of IGN. The article reads Kingdom Hearts 3 director Tetsuya Nomura says a Nintendo Switch version of Kingdom Hearts 3 or Xbox One versions of the Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 and 2.5 remix or Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 final chapter prologue. That is another reason why I can't stand the Kingdom Hearts franchise is because they have all these like weird ass names. I, I, I can't understand what the hell is going on. Uh, collections could be possible in the future, uh, but only after existing versions of Kingdom Hearts 3 are completed. Uh, speaking to IGN at D23 Expo today, Nomura uh, said he isn't ruling out Kingdom Hearts 3 coming to Nintendo Switch eventually, but wants to fulfill the promise of the PS4 and Xbox One versions before the team focus on, focuses on additional platforms. And I quote, The Nintendo Switch is, a, is definitely a very interesting piece of hardware, but if we lightly say, Oh yeah, we'll be on the Nintendo Switch, I'm sure people will come back and say, 
But what about the PS4 and Xbox One? We want them out first. Don't focus on other platforms. No more told IGN. So for now, we want to focus on what platforms uh, we've already announced we're going to be releasing Kingdom Hearts 3 on. And so after, perhaps, maybe we can start thinking about other possibilities. Uh, similar, similarly, I can never pronounce that word quickly. <laughs> Nomura uh, didn't completely dismiss the possibility of HD collections on, H on Xbox One, but noted that he isn't sure demand exists outside of the West. Uh, and I quote, just like the previous answer, if we were to announce yet another uh, non-Kingdom Hearts 3 project, uh, people are going to be like, hey, what's going on? So we, will, so we will want to focus on releasing on the platforms that we have an already announced. Uh, end quote, he reiterated earlier today, Square Enix, blah, 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 uh, that there's a Toy Story world in Kingdom Hearts 3, moving on. Um, again, no real commentary. Again, this was for people who are, who are. Re I, I really don't have much commentary on any of these because I don't know enough about the games um, to make commentary. Um, I, in plus my views on, my view on the Nintendo Switch is actually changing. I actually really want one and, um, Mostly because I want I, I, I want to play that new Mario game that's coming out next month, but um, no I, I I think the Switch has battled its way in. It fought its way. It made its own market. I'll admit I was wrong about it. Um, that there is much more uh, interest in it than I thought there would be. And um, again I, I haven't seen actual sales data yet, but it seems like uh, I'm going to be completely wrong on the Nintendo Switch. So I I will admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3 director hints at second playable character. Jonathan Dornbush of IGN. Uh, article reads, Kingdom Hearts games uh, have a, have made a habit out of featuring multiple playable characters, and Kingdom Hearts 3 looks to be following in the step with its predecessors, according to the game's director. Speaking at IGN at D23 Expo, Tetsuo, Tetsuya Nomura declined to say exactly who, but did hint that Sora will not be the only playable character in Kingdom Hearts 3. And I quote, uh, So it would be tough to introduce many multiple playable characters, but there is an intention of adding a playable character aside from Sora. Unfortunately, we're not able to disclose who it is yet. Uh, but there will be another playable character. Uh, no more said. Kingdom Hearts 2 uh, started off putting players in the role of Roxas, Sars, Nobody, uh, before Sejuing? I have no idea. Segwaying? I have no clue. Uh, back into making the series protagonist playable, and Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep actually featured three Keyblade wielding uh, playable characters, even going back to the Game Boy Advance uh, entry Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Players could control Riku in a second campaign after beating Sora's adventure. Nomura also discussed why Kingdom Hearts 3 features a party system that allows for more than two additional members to fight alongside Sora. No longer will players have to make the decision of which characters to bring with them into battle, and it in part comes from the decision to do away with the Dimension Link feature included in the PSP entry Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Uh, D Link that has been done away. D Link that has been done away with. Uh, it was actually a compromise in a previous iteration because we were not able to do, display multiple characters on that platform in the game. No more is said. We're able to depict multiple characters. Up to five people can join. Even more multiple characters can join your party. Uh, that five people in question would likely refer to the D23 uh, Expo trailer, which showcased Sora in battle alongside Donald, Goofy, Buzz Lightyear, and Woody all at once. And the orchestra and the orchestra trailer that debuted uh, during E3 2017 features Hercules, Donald, and Goofy all in battle. Nomura also spoke to IGN about the possibilities of Kingdom Hearts 3, blah, blah, blah. We've already read that article. And also about the uh, Toy Story world. Um, see right here in, in this, we've we're we're running into some other things that what, what I don't like about the Kingdom Hearts franchise, um, and that is it's been on so many different platforms and so many different iterations. You know, we had Birth by Sleep, uh, we had uh, Chain of Memories, we had the, the P, we had a PSP version. <laughs> we oh that was Birth by Sleep, um, but there were multiple versions. There's PS2. There's the, there's just so much. In Kingdom Hearts, and again, it's just the game never resonated so much with me. Um, I, actually, I don't think I've beaten the first one. Because um, I played the first one up to the Maleficent boss fight. And then I've played the second one and had no clue what was going on. Because I, I don't understand the whole thing with the nobody. I understand it's like a doppelganger, but it doesn't have a heart. Again, eh. like I said, you don't want to talk to me about Kingdom Hearts. Because I, I, I know very little about the entire about the franchise as a whole. Um, but again, that's a problem with mine. Um, again, I, I'm not going to make any, I, 
I feel bad talking about this without being able to add any of my commentary, but I really can't add my commentary to this one just for the sheer fact that I don't know enough about Kingdom Hearts to give you um, effective commentary. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, next one, and the final Kingdom Hearts article. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Director confirms Gummy Ships will uh, return a new, magical, uh, new Magic Ability Tears. Article by Alex Osborne of IGN. Game director Tetsuya Nomura has confirmed that Kingdom Hearts 3... Sorry. Uh, uh, will indeed mark the return of the gummy ship. And I quote, We can confirm that we do have gummy ships in Kingdom Hearts 3 because it is a uh, numbered Kingdom Hearts... It is a numbered Kingdom Hearts title. Nomura confirmed at IGN... Uh, to IGN at the 23 Expo. Uh, you can expect to show up... Jeez, uh, Christ, I can't read. You can expect that to show up, but it has evolved. We can't say how it has evolved. It's a secret, but gunny, gummy ships will be in Kingdom Hearts 3. End quote. Gummy ships uh, were featured in both Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2. It was one of the more criticized aspects of the original game, so a few changes were made in the sequel, and it looks like Square Enix will further evolve the gummy ship system in the series' third main installment. Nomura also confirmed that Kingdom Hearts 3 will feature new magic tiers, uh, after noticing a Blizzara as an ability in the Orchestra World Tour trailer, uh, we asked Nomura uh, about the additional tiers, and he said that indeed there are, um, there is indeed a higher form of Blizzaga. Hopefully that's how that's pronounced. Uh, and I quote, The background of the tier of the magic up until now, only King Mickey was able to utilize the most powerful form of magic. He explained, fans of the franchise will remember Mickey cast the highest form of stop magic, Stopsa, in Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. Jesus Christ. Uh, it has existed, and then in 2.8, as Aqua becomes Keyblade Master, she's also able to control the highest form of certain magic, Nomura added. As you noticed, uh, it is a higher tier of magic, and Sora is going to be able to use that in Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. Kingdom Hearts 3 will release uh, PlayStation and Xbox One sometime in 2018, while the game isn't currently... Blah, blah, blah. We already read about that stuff. Uh, again, what I've said on the last couple, I I just don't know. God damn. I'm sorry, but how do you keep the Kingdom Hearts narrative straight? I mean, there's so many prequels and, su and side stories and this and that. and it, it, it has such a deep lore to it. Which, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you can keep track of all of that, great. This is my thing with JRPGs, and it, which is weird coming from me because I love JRPGs. Um, especially when they try and build franchises. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. It's like, um, I kind of like in Final Fantasy how everything's kind of a, everything's sort of standalone for the most part. I mean, there are some direct sequels, there are some connections here and there. Um, as it's always, as it's been explained to me, King uh, of Final Fantasy is a, it, it all takes place in the same world, just at different times and places, um, and which I'm assuming is the same with Kingdom Hearts 3, but the problem is Kingdom Hearts 3, everything always seems so connected, like you have to play the other games, and I, I, I am just so flipping confused um, as to how the world works, because also I, I never found that anything was very it was explained that well of what the hell is going on. Um, that bothers me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I'm, I'm maybe I'm simple minded, whatever. It's just, it, eh, it bothers me. But again, I, I, I hope the best for anybody who, who's excited about this game. I hope you enjoyed these articles. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the game when it inevitably launches. That's I, I, I want, th I want that clear. That I do hope whoever sees this enjoys it. Or whoever plays this game enjoys this game. Because this is a game for them. Uh, not a game for me. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, next one. Uh, article by uh, p -p 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 uh, Alex Gilyadev of IGN. Uh, an article. Uh, Call of Duty uh, WW2 Zombies Cast has been revealed. Uh, we'll do the update first. Because it's up here and it doesn't really change or ruin anything. Uh, Sledgehammer also announced that Ving Rhames will play Jefferson Potts. Yes. I'm sorry. I, lo I love Ving Rhames. Uh, you want a really good movie with him in it? Go check out um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Tournament. It's a very, very good movie. And plus, I just I, lo I love Ving Rhames. Um, I Ving Rhames also played the bad guy. The guy who owned the prison in uh, 
Death Race 2. The, 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 the one with Luke Goss, the sequel to the Jason Statham one. Although I do think there was a sequel to Death Race 2000. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting lost in weird trivia about Ming Rames. <laughs> uh, the article reads, uh, The cast of Call of Duty uh, WW2's Zombies Mode has been revealed. Developer Sledgehammer Games uh, announced the news via Twitter ahead of the game, uh, ahead of the mode's uh, world reveal in two days at San Diego Comic-Con 2017. The full cast is as follows. David Tennant, Doctor Who, Jessica Jones, uh, as Drosten Hind. Yeah, really, he's in Jessica Jones. I didn't know that. Not my favorite Doctor. Um, he was number 10, I believe. He took place after my favorite Doctor, Doctor 9, who played in the first season uh, when it came back from the, the new version. Sorry, I'm a giant nerd here. Uh, God, I blame my ex-girlfriend. She got me watching Doctor Who. Ugh. Uh, Catherine Winnick, hopefully that's how that's pronounced, uh, from Vikings as Mary Fisher, uh, L.O.D. Jung, Marvel's Daredevil as, uh, Olivia Durant and, or Durant, and Udo Kier, that's how that's pronounced, as, uh, Dr. Peter Straub, Dr. P I don't know. Um, back in April, uh, Activision Promise Zombie Mode will deliver a unique storyline and will be an all-new take on Nazi zombies. Uh, blah, 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 just general stuff. Uh, that was just going over some of the cast, uh, and once more, like I said, Ving Rhames. Uh, now we actually have a video, uh, this is a, a um, what about, how long is it about? Yeah, it's about 10 minutes. A, um, interview done by IGN, uh, I believe this, yep, this is at Comic-Con. Uh, we have, uh, Damon Hatfield, the, um, host, presenter, uh, you know, presenter at IGN, also the host of, um, GameScoop, uh, I, one of IGN's podcasts. Jeez, I'm sorry. I'm 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 losing my train of thought. Like, just it, thoughts are coming coming in and out, guys. Uh, and doing an interview with these guys on um the Call of Duty to zombies. So, when Nazi zombies attack, you call in the greatest generation. Please welcome Sledgehammer Games' John Horsley and Cameron Dayton. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah. First of all, uh, can I say I appreciate how straightforward you are with the name of this mode. Call of Duty, World War II, Nazi zombies. I know, I know exactly what I'm getting right up front. We didn't want there to be any questions. No confusion, yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, you revealed the mode at your panel yesterday, and uh, you revealed the trailer for the mode, which I think we're gonna bring up here in just a second, but uh, what was the reaction like? Oh, it was super, yeah, super positive. positive. Yeah. Great. yeah, we uh, met some fans yesterday in line, and they were really excited. So it's really excited to see them excited, so everybody's excited. Now. I mean, yeah, so it's, it's been it. several months since World War II was or Call of Duty World War II was announced, uh, so you must, it must be uh, exciting to finally be able to share this mode. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's kind of a new fun wrinkle to the, uh, to the mode, so we're, uh, we're still looking forward to it. They were both excited and scared. We like that well, you combination. Want, that's what you're going for, right? Yeah, You want yeah, them to yeah, be yeah. a little bit scared. Uh, yeah, so tell us about this. This is a uh, four-player cooperative mode, and uh, the setup is our four heroes are going, uh, they're infiltrating a German city, looking for uh, art, yeah. right? Art relics that they're trying to uh, rescue out of there, and they discover the Third Reich has been working on an undead army. Right. Correct? Yeah, right. yeah. We, we thought it was an interesting angle to come in with the, uh, the MFAA, which was a, a unique collection of uh, academics and scholars and soldiers, and uh, it allowed us to, to bring in a broader range of uh, uh, ideas and philosophies uh, behind the, scene, the scenes on this. So, so our, you also reveal the cast for this mode. Uh, so your, your, our heroes include David Tennant from Doctor Who. That's right. What can you tell us about his character? Well, he's uh, David plays a character named Drosten Hind, who's a part-time professor, part-time art thief. Maybe he likes art a little too much, <laughs> and uh, he's been given an option to stay in jail or to help the Allies recover stolen art. And so he's joined this the squad that's like all the other squads in World War II, been deployed looking for stolen art, and uh, they're on a mission, come into a little village, and and unfortunately. All right, that trailer looked really cool. I, I really like the new tone that they're going for because. Um... Zombies has always kind of seemed like it, it, it's been trying to get it, it's been getting goofier and goofier, um, especially with the last one in the in the amusement park uh, after uh, Infinite Warfare. Uh, but this one looks like it's really hitting the nail on the head with the um, with the ambiance, kind of in that dark um, underground kind of again not uh, Nazi architecture. Again, I keep saying this. It, it, this this sounds really weird. Nazi architecture has always kind of interested me because I I really like the the pillar look. Um, 
all the st- you know the the stonework and everything. I I I, th- I, th- I again it's, it interests me. Um, I find interest in a lot of weird things, guys. <clears throat> um, but no, I mean I I'm I'm this might be the first time that I am actually interested in a zombies mode. Because uh, again, I'm I'm very much a, a single player sort of guy. But really, this this zombie mode really interests me. Just just from looking at that trailer, not even hearing what was kind of uh, what was being said and what kind of their concept is. It's interesting, I guess. But um, I think ambiance really really kind of set the tone there. Fortunately for them, they discover a lot more than stolen art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you also have Ving Rhames, and who's he playing? Okay, so Ving is an interesting character. He was initially just a, a, a basic soldier on the battlefield, uh, was asked to go in uh, to, uh, to burn out a, a bunker area and said, well, we've got some Rembrandt pieces in here. We can't torch this. So his father had worked in a museum and had taught him all about the, the Bauhaus revolution. And so he knew more about art than a lot of people suspected. So he was very quickly moved from the front lines uh, to the MFAA so he could become one of these monument men. Interesting. And yeah. he's, he knows a lot about art, but he's still a badass. He's oh, the muscle yeah. Oh, yeah. In, the, in the group. I mean, you don't cast he's being Bing Rams unless yeah, you're yeah. looking for a badass. <laughs> right, well, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got Elodie Young, who plays Electra on... All right. That, that's, such a very, that's such an odd thing to say about Bing Rams. Because, look, no, nothing against Bing Rams. I love Bing Rams. But the dude, he's a big dude. And I, and, and, and I don't mean, like, he's, like, a big dude, like you know, your ripped action star kind of big dude. He's a big fucking dude. Um, again, I, I, I'm not trying to say he's fat, but I'm just saying he's, he, he, he's not your typical action kind of like you, you think you're your typical action hero. You don't think Ving Rhames, but Ving Rhames kicks fucking ass, man. I God, I love Ving Rhames. I'm sorry. I know. I'm no, I'm nerding out. I just title this video of Ving Ring, Ving Rhames, a love letter. Daredevil? Yes. Very right. cool. And she's part of the French Resistance, is that right? Yeah. And she's also, again, every one of our characters has this combination of uh, understanding of the humanities as well as some battlefield experience. And so she was part of La Resistance, and, uh, but, but before that worked in the Louvre. And so, again, had this, this understanding and exposure to paintings and sculptures, so knows what to recognize, but also can field strip any weapon on either side of the trenches. So That's yeah. a useful skill to have. Handy. Handy, yeah. Uh, and then there's an actress from Vikings. Her, I, I'm blanking on her name. What's her name? Catherine Winnick. Catherine, Catherine Winnick. Yes. Yeah. And she is actually, uh, was, uh, is she a German that uh, defected? Yeah, so she's actually at the core of our of our story here, where she was she, she was in Bavaria and uh, and had a falling out with her brother. They both believed in uh, different uh, political ideologies, and she ended up leaving, um, and uh, and actually has since become a spy for the OSS, which was the uh, you know the earlier version of the CIA, and so has been so separate from her family and everything going on in World War II uh, until now, until she starts getting letters from her brother and uh, finding out about the art and something darker going on in her own town. So she's coming back. It's, there's a little bit of a homecoming here, mm. uh, but, but there's a lot of very uh, uh, painful personal stuff that are involved with it as well. Yeah. So obviously from the, the trailer, we can tell there's a very different tone uh, in this mode than from the, uh, the Call of Duty World War II campaign that we've seen. Okay. Is this supposed to be uh, is it supposed to be set in the same universe as the campaign, the story the campaign's telling, or is it just a completely separate thing? Well, it's in the in the darkest corner of that universe. Okay, right? it's still yeah. set in the end of World War II. It's set in a, a grounded, believable universe that happens to contain zombies, and so that's yeah. the conceit. Everything else is pretty much straight, and uh, so they, you know, the the question we answer, I think, is if the Germans did find a way to to make an undead army, what would they do, and how would they do it, and how how would that be reflected in the, the facilities and the zombies themselves? Because these these are zombies built for war. These are are creatures who are brought back to to fight. Militarized. Yes, and so that that lets us add um, anything from game mechanics to visuals to audio to a story. And Cameron and the team have done a great job, kind of bringing that new kind of take on zombies to life. Yeah, well, yeah, so you, you, you say it's a, a new take on zombies. You also have a difference in tone from other, the previous zombie modes, is that right? Uh, are you trying to play it a little bit more uh, like, like real horror rather than like campy fun horror? Yeah, you know, the, the DNA of our studio is, is grounded in horror games. It's just something that the, uh, our team... I love Dead Space. All right. All Big right, Dead well, Space fans. Yeah, the, so I mean, coming from that route, uh, it, it's, it's something that we feel like we're, we're uh, 
attuned for. We, sure. we, we're, uh, we're a team that knows how to build the shock terror, the, 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 the slowly boiling terror, the, the fear of something chasing behind you, and all of those elements have been shaped into this. We just felt that was something that would be good for our, our studio to focus on, on in our version of yeah. this game. Yeah, and everything we do is in service of terrifying the player in this mode, from the, the setting, we thank the story, you for your service. Those <laughs> the, all the, the techniques that the studio has learned over the years have been applied to this, and, and I, we were just talking about it that I play the game all the time, of course, and I still get scared. I still get startled. I, you know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a really great uh, change of pace. Well, there's some shots of the zombies in the trailer. That remind me a little bit of the necromorphs in, in Dead Space. Uh, are you having some fun and getting creative with the types of zombies uh, in this game? They're not just straight up The Walking Dead. Right? Yeah, no, no, no. The, again, since there is a, a purpose behind them, you know, and they're being uh, engineered. Uh, for the battlefield, right. and so so while we've got the game design reason, you know this this one's faster, this one's that. Uh, there, it's also fun to come up with a narrative explanation. You know, this is this is our anti-armor. This is the one that gets into the trenches. Sure. This is you know, and uh, uh, it, it's fun that weaving the story in with that actually complements the game design wonderfully. Sure. Uh, is it true you've also you went back and like referenced old John Carpenter films? Uh, oh, we're all fans of all the horror yeah. films and. Yeah. It and the thing, and there's a bunch of great uh, material to draw inspiration from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, pay our respects to George Romero, who passed recently. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Hero, the entire studio. Yeah, I did want to mention, I appreciate it. I think during your panel, yeah. uh, you did give George Romero a shout out. And that's, yeah. that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and for a game style that's got so many layers, that mm -hmm. has these, these hidden Easter eggs, uh, we. we you, you can't make a zombie uh, game without giving some homage to the great, you know, uh, creators and uh, stories that have happened before. So, so you're, you're, you're trying to provide this horror experience for the player, but it's also a video game, mm -hmm. and you're also including, like, secrets, right? And, like, yeah. uh, there's ways to unlock new areas right. uh, of, of the map. Is there, can you speak to that at all? I know you don't want to, like, spoil anything, but... Yeah, we, uh, we certainly have uh, what I call a hidden world, right? Mm -hmm. You know where to look and how to look. You're going to see things and lead you deeper into this uh, pretty dark corner of the Call of Duty universe. And we've, we have a really fun way to bring new players in. And I think we also recognize the, the interest of hardcore to get challenged. And, and this may be the most challenging Zombies map ever done. Well, yeah. I know people are super excited about it. I think one of our viewers on Twitter actually has a question. Here's an idea. Don't just watch this show, be a part of it. Just tweet your thoughts and questions at IGN with the hashtag SDCC, and we might respond on the air like EMJF did when he tweeted, will the zombie mode be wave or round based? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's both, right? We have uh, waves of zombies that terrorize the player, and that gives a nice roller coaster to it, so sometimes you're gonna have a little bit of room to maneuver and look around and relax, and other times they're coming in these giant crowds, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a round-based uh, zombie experience. I see. Do you have a, a, a goal in mind for like how long the whole experience you want you want it to last, the player? You know, our strategy was to get in this and allow for if you want to jump in and just shoot zombie heads for you know five minutes, sure. it'll be completely rewarding on that. But as John mentioned, there is this layered experience, you know, and so so while we've got the the core story beats uh, that. that that everybody has access to, uh, you'll get little hints and shadows moving behind you in the darkness and things happening in the windows that uh, will allude towards a greater, deeper, richer, much longer play experience. Well, Call of Duty World War II, Nazi zombies, looks very cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, it's uh, very uh, interesting. Interesting concept. Um, I, I, I really like how... Um, I, I'm I'm trying to think how to talk about this, like you know, like like he was he was seeing some um, uh, he was seeing some some dead space in there, which which like I said, you know, sledgehammer again. I mean, it makes sense why you see dead space in there. I'm actually seeing a lot of doom, you know, just like with some of what some of the zombies looked like. There was one that was that like had no arms. It was like running forward, reminding me of something from Doom. Um, but the game lo looks really interesting, very very neat, um, sort of ambiotic feel. Uh, I, I really like what, what he said right there at the end, where it's, um, if you just want to kind of shoot z zombie heads for about an hour, or about five minutes, cool, but if you also want to experience more of the, the, the narrative, the story, there's also that, so, um, and, and again, I, I think this... I, I think the zombie mode will be more accessible to people like me who want to kind of see that story 
but uh, at the same time be um, what other people like and be all you know zombie hardcore shooting zombie faces whatnot um, all that uh, moving on to our last couple of stories uh, this first one uh, Undertale PS4 v- uh, Vita release date announced collector's edition now available for pre-order article by Alex Gilyadev of IGN. Uh, article reads, Undertale will be released digitally for PlayStation 4 and Vita on August 15th. According to the PlayStation blog, the game is now available for pre-order on the PSN and will support cross-buy uh, between the two platforms. Uh, those who pre-order the $15 US digital uh, US dollar digital <laughs> version of Undertale will receive a dynamic theme designed by Truant Pixel and uh, Marigo. Oh, that's pronounced correctly. Additionally, pre-orders uh, are now open on Fangamer for the physical standard edition and collector's edition of the game for PlayStation 4, Vita, and PC. These physical versions will ship sometime in September. Uh, Kind of a nice picture. No sheet music there. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, The standard edition will cost 25 US dollars and come with a 24-page illustrated booklet. Meanwhile, the 64 US dollar uh, collector's edition adds the game's complete soundtrack, an annotated sheet music, and 14 um, carat gold-plated musical locket. Uh, that plays the Undertale theme, uh, the Undertale song "Memory." Um, I don't know a lot about Undertale. I'm not gonna lie, it's sort of a, I, I, you know, kind of this this old kind of style, 16 8 bit, whatever sort of um, adventure game. As far as I understand it, it's an adventure game. <laughs> um, it, it, it's like I said, I I I, I know very little about Undertale. Um, I've been told that it's very, I've been told by people it's good. So I, I will, I, maybe not my recommendation, but I'll push their recommendation onto you. Um, I've heard some of the music and the music is pretty, is pretty neat. So I, I, <laughs> I can say that. Um, but yeah, as far as the game goes, uh, the game itself goes, I, I, I cannot provide, um, any recommendations, but I have had people tell me that yes, it is good. It is worth, it, it is, it is, uh, worth a play. So. Uh, moving on to our final story today, uh, article by uh, Jonathan Dornbush, IGN, uh, Bioware General Manager Steps Down, Original Mass Effect uh, Director Returning. Um, article reads, Aaron Flynn, the General Manager of Mass Effect and Dragon Age developer Bioware, has announced he is stepping down after 17 years with the company. Uh, Casey, uh, Casey Hudson, the project's... Uh, the project director of the original Mass Effect will be returning to lead the studio as the new general manager. Flynn and Hudson uh, made their initial uh, announcements in separate posts on Bioware's official website. Flynn has been with the company for 17 years, and I quote, From my first day until now, I have learned much, met great colleagues and friends, and got the chance uh, to help give players some truly uh, incredible experiences. Every time I think I found a favorite game-making experience, we start something new and somehow find fun and uh, satisfaction in the new challenges, Flynn wrote. Flynn explained in his post that he has been considering making changes to his life for a while, and Hudson's willingness to return offered him the opportunity to do just that. He will be working with Flynn with him to assist in the transition. Hudson originally left Bioware in 2014 and later announced in 2015 that he had joined Microsoft Studios as a creative director uh, with a focus on HoloLens, the director of the first three Mass Effect titles. Uh, explained in his post that, and I quote, the last few years have been transformative for me from having uh, to from having to reflect on what I most want to do to working with new technologies at platform scale. And now I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to return to lead Bioware, a studio that I think of as a home, end quote. Uh, I'd also like to wish my good friend Aaron Flynn the very best in the future, Hudson wrote. Bioware continues to hold a special magic uh, fully of profound full of profoundly talented people and an inspiring creative energy. When I uh, look at the stunning progress Aaron and the team has made with Anthem uh, and the other projects and works, I truly believe our best is yet to come. Uh, and then more info on um, Anthem. Um, generally, I get, you know, I mean, if, you, if you're unhappy with what, what's been going on at Bioware, I, I, I guess this is... This is good news, especially uh, after the whole Mass Effect Andromeda debacle, uh, with uh, what it looked like, uh, how much design time actually went into the game. Then um, uh, my theory on that is, I think a lot more uh, attention was being paid um, to Anthem, which I guess right now with where the company 
is and where public opinion of the company is right now. Um, Hudson and Anthem better do well, or else they, I think, Bioware might be in some trouble. Um, again, it just, it, I, I keep saying it. I don't think uh, Andromeda is as bad as people are were saying it was, but I do, I don't think that that was their best foot forward. I think they could have made a much better game. Uh, and again, just look to Dragon Age Inquisition, um, a far superior game in my opinion. Um, I think they tried to make Mass Effect too much like Dragon Age, and just they they shat the bed on that one. Uh, but like I said, hopefully this is a, a new turn. Um, hopefully, will uh, hopefully Anthem does well. Hopefully we get a, another Mass Effect, and that will make up for what Andromeda was. Um, but yeah, I guess that was all I got for you. I, I feel a little bad because like I feel here and there I'm saying a lot of I don't know and eh, kind of news, but re really there wasn't anything that super peaked my that piqued my interest. I, I just I, I gathered news that I thought uh, people would like. So some in some weeks this just happens. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this show nonetheless, as I always hope you enjoy my content. Uh, you find me over on Facebook, Twitter, the website, minds.com. Links to all those are down in the description below. Remember to like, comment. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more next time. But until then, guys, I am AJ Gels. This is the Unthought Gaming Channel. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm out.